Jerry nullification for the win. Welcome back to Good News Next Week, everybody. I'm James Evan Pilato for MediaMonarchy.com. We've got that story and two other stories that put together three good things going down in three different states. Now, Good News Next Week, of course, is the spinoff from the long-running New World Next Week series, trying to highlight some of the ways that we are winning. Our first story this week, we congratulate the state of Pennsylvania for becoming the 24th state to finally legalize medical marijuana. And we can grab this from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. As their governor has already signed the bill, Tom Wolf on Sunday signed Pennsylvania's medical marijuana bill into law, drawing cheers and applause from advocates, many of them parents, with children who filled up the Capitol Rotunda. People stood throughout the center of the Capitol, some with kids in strollers or in their arms or staring down from the balcony. And all the governor said was have the ability to have that doctor make a decision in conjunction with his or her patient that will make the patient's life better. So the interesting thing about this article is parent after parent after parent of a kid who needs some kind of better treatment than what they get from Big Pharma, which is the part of the cause of all of this in the first place. Now, the extra good thing about this piece from the Post-Gazette is that it breaks down who and who could do what in Pennsylvania. So it is specific to that state, as of course it is still federally illegal. So all the states basically ad hoc are putting together a new 21st century way forward. And we wholeheartedly endorse that. I know some claim that the decriminalization of drugs is just another step of the new world order. And well, they're the ones who made it illegal in the first place. So I'm all for ending what gets people out of prison for sharing a plant. We can deal with some of the ramifications and all those other opinions later, but let's get people out of jail and using their food as their medicine and their medicine as their choice, since we are all, you know, sovereign human beings and such. Our title story this week was submitted to us on Twitter using hashtag good news next week via the very appropriate to this 15th episode of good news next week. I was wrong, actually. Last week wasn't 15. That was 14. This is actually 15. <laughs> At Entheogenesis put the story to us, New Hampshire passes jury nullification bill. And we take this from Activist Post as the New Hampshire House becomes the first in the U.S. to pass a bill to inform jurors of their right to deem government unjust. So the New Hampshire House just passed a bill that would make it the first state in the nation to require courts to inform juries of their right to vote not guilty when the verdict would produce an unjust result. That right, which all juries possess but may not be aware of, is called jury nullification. That's the real definition of a word that may sound scary or weird on the face of it. So even if government has proved that someone is guilty under law, a jury can let this person go if they believe it is wrong. This is one of the few ways citizens can actually push back against the system to counter, of course, all the irrational tendencies that come from a centralized bureaucracy. It's even worth noting at the bottom of this article on activistpost.com. And again, good news next week. We're just giving you brief nuggets of good things going on around the world, and we always want your ideas as well. Hashtag good news next week, or you can even email me, james, at mediamonarchy.com. The Cato Institute points out on this topic of jury nullification, you can't find references to jury nullification around the time of the American Revolution. That's because it was part and parcel of what a jury trial was all about. If jurors thought the government was treating someone unjustly, they could acquit and restore that person's liberty. Jury trials were celebrated, and they were explicit provisions. They had explicit provisions, rather in the Constitution so that the government could not take them away. So this is another interesting element that it's our right anyway, but we have to reaffirm these rights in the growing face of decades and generations long tyranny. And as you're now seeing people push back and using the very tools that have been used to keep us down, breaking those tools and hopefully learning our way forward. Our final story on this week's Good News Next Week and our third state. So we went from Pennsylvania, we went to New Hampshire, and now we'll head on down to Florida for some rare good news. Has the green sea turtle of Florida and even Mexico no longer endangered? So Fish and Wildlife announced there are now 2,250 nesting females in Florida alone, up from just a handful in 1978. And you also have charts and graphs showing how many of the growths had happened. One of them even pointing out that shows that, of course, animals can be resilient to illegal harvest, i.e. poaching, plastic pollution, and warming waters. We'll include fun 
animal photos in these good news next week episodes some of the other stories we are looking at and i think a great related one to the turtle story is the number of wild tigers increases for the first time in 100 years our buddy eric submitted that story to us and it comes via npr and it gets pretty ancient actually the number of tigers in the world has risen from an estimated 3200 in 2010 to about 3890 in 2016 a gain of more than about 20 percent so the biggest gains happening in India, Russia, Nepal, and Bhutan. Elsewhere, Oregon researchers have developed an app to protect bees. And it's all about what pesticides will most harm bees, and it's pretty specifically made for the Pacific Northwest. Now, hopefully all that data will be open-sourced, and then other people can make their own bee apps about their areas. Joel Van Doren always submits good stories via Twitter and hashtag good news next week. New research provides images of the brain on acid and hints at its potential to promote creativity. So this is when the drugs kicked in, as also ayahuasca, the shamanic hallucinogen, could help treat anxiety. They've been testing it on, I believe, mice. Our last Good News Next Week story submitted by you using hashtag good news next week. Cheap electricity or taking the piss as they call it, as a one-pound fuel cell creates electricity from piss, from urine, or any other bits of generating power. So urine isn't the only thing. You can use lots of other things, and this has been worked on before, but I believe it's never been this small, and it's never been this cheap. So then if we add on to that something like 3D printing these fuel cells, then you're talking about good news next week. We love your good news ideas again using hashtag good news next week, and we will share them in these episodes, keeping the positivity going. And I thank you for watching episode 15 of Good News Next Week for April 18th, 2016. I'm James Evan Pilato for MediaMonarchy.com, reminding you, as always, my friends, don't hate the media, become the media. Take care. Yeah.